Welcome to today's lesson on cell transport. Today we're going to talk about how things get into and out of the cell. Okay, we're going to talk about cell movement through the cell membrane because the cell membrane is what controls what goes into and out of the cell. We're going to talk about three different types of solutions, hypertonic, uh, hypotonic solution, hypertonic solution, and isotonic solutions and what happens to a cell when it's in those conditions. And finally, we're talk going to talk about passive versus active transport. So to start with, let's talk about this, the actual movement through the cell. First of all, we've already talked about the cell membrane and the fact that there are transport proteins. The cell membrane is a lipid bilayer and that pretty much keeps things out and in the cell and nothing can pretty much move through the cell membrane, except for two substances. Those two substances are oxygen, O2 can move straight through the cell membrane, and carbon dioxide, CO2, can move straight through the cell membrane out because they are small enough gas molecule molecules that they can get through that lipid bilayer. But those are pretty much the only things that can move straight through the cell membrane. The other materials, like for instance if we have potassium here, or glucose molecules, or sodium chloride, any salts that we need, those pieces will need to move through those transport proteins. Okay, so we've talked about those. If you need a refresher on the cell membrane, go ahead and watch the cellular boundaries video again. So the lipid bilayer, the O2 and CO2 can move straight through it. Everything else is going to need those carrier proteins. All right, so let's talk about the three different types of solutions. We have a hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic. So hyper, hyper means more. Okay, we're over the top, more active, or something like that you're talking about. So hypertonic solution means that we have a cell, and it's in a liquid that has more dissolved minerals in it than what's inside the cell. Okay? So there's a higher concentration of water inside the cell, and because there's a higher concentration of water inside the cell, and there's a higher concentration of solutions outside the cell, our solutes outside the cell, we're going to want to move all of the water is going to want to move outside of the cell. Okay, we're going to want to move all this water out of the cell to make it equal. Okay, we're going to want to make equal concentrations. So we're going to move the water out of the cell. The cell is going to shrink right up in a hypertonic solution and as it does that, it's going to cause some issues with the cell. The second one is a hypotonic solution. Hypo meaning less than or below. So this hypotonic solution has less dissolved mineral concentration outside of the cell than there is in, which means there's more water outside of the cell. Okay, Less dissolved minerals outside means more water outside. The water is then going to want to move into the cell and the cell is going to swell up. As that cell swells up, it can eventually burst and this is what actually can happen if you were to take a um, saltwater fish or plant um, and take and put it inside of a freshwater, uh, freshwater tank you would actually have this happening and it would kill your, um, kill your fish. Lastly we have an isotonic solution and an isotonic solution means that we have the same concentration iso means the same so we have the same concentration inside the cell as we do outside. So what's going to happen is those materials are going to move into the cell and out of the cell at the same rate. Movement is still going to continue, it's just going to move at the same rate. Okay. So hypertonic solution, the water is going to move out very quickly. Hypotonic solution, the water is going to move into the cell very quickly and an isotonic solution, we're going to have the equal movements happening. All right, so let's take a look at the difference between passive and active transport. Now passive, if you think, you are, if you think about doing be somebody being very passive, it means they're just kind of sitting back, they're not going to do a whole lot, they don't want to cause a lot of commotion. So they're basically exerting no energy into a situation. If you are passively observing something or passive in a situation, you're exerting no energy into that situation. So, passive transport requires absolutely no energy to happen. For the most part, this is moving things that are, it's called moving with the concentration gradient. So that's what we were just talking about. Moving from a high concentration of something 
to a lower concentration of something until it reaches that equal stage, which is called equilibrium. Active transport, on the other hand, if you think about being very active, you're going out, you're using a lot of energy. Active transport is going to require you to use a lot of energy. This is moving against the concentration gradient. So with this, we're talking about, hey, I have a lot of potassium inside my cell, but I still need to move it into the cell even more. Okay, so I need to overload my cell with this potassium, and so it's going to go against the concentration gradient. I'm going to move from a low concentration to a high concentration, and that's going to require a lot of energy. Okay, so let's review. First of all, passive transport requires no energy. Active transport requires a lot of energy, and you need to know, understand the different concentrations of liquid within and outside of the cell and how that liquid would move through the uh, inner out of the cell.